All right, please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. Ricky Tisdale, 36 4273. All right, Ricky, my name is Brendan Kelsey. Along with me is Mr. Marabella. And Mr. Freeman will be your panel, explain the process to you, read some information to the record, have a parole interview, ask you some questions. You can respond at the end. You can make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. And, and will you have some guests here? A couple will speak. Uh, you have uh, Miss Caitlin, you're his attorney. Yes, sir. Okay. And you'll uh, speak at the end. Yes, thank you. And I can't, Gwen Dilworth is there, uh, Nick Holden, Dennis Warden Pope, Courtney Rushup, Cole, Tiffany Rushkob, Louis Rushkob, Dr. Virginia White, Patricia Lloyd, Janet Esht. And Carrie Myers. All right, Ricky Tisdale, DOC number 364273. You are a fourth class offender for a lunch date 8 1 2021, not eligible for good time, life, sentence, possession of intent, distribute, uh, meth, let's see, MDMA, three counts, possession of intent, distribute MDMA, habitual offender. Uh, okay. Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. All right, Ricky, how old are you? 45. 45? 45. How many years have you been incarcerated? Almost 20 years. And what's your current status there? Are you a uh, trustee? No, sir. Medium class. Medium class. All right. What do you do around the facility? Um, I work on maintenance at Camp D, um, doing different sorts of maintenance, uh, working on cell doors, plumbing, um, just maintenance around, around the camp. So what was so what you do? You're a drug seller, user, or both? Um, I, I was a user. I was an addict, and you know that's I ended up selling drugs to support a habit. So do you have a high school diploma or a GED? I have a GED, sir. Okay. So I yeah, I've looked obviously uh, your your attorney um gave us a lot of good information. I've gone through all of them. You have a lot of recommendations, you've taken a lot of classes, you've done a lot of good things. Uh I, I'd like to ask you obviously about your, your discipline. You've been in jail for a long time, and I see you had a you had a contraband in 2022. You had a contraband in 19. You had a contraband in 18. You had uh, looks like fighting in, in 18. Tell me about your uh, your disciplinary writings. What was the contraband in 22? 22. 22. Um, yeah. So you know when I was when I was getting off of the drugs, um, you know I I was still making bad decisions you know i was focused on you know stop using drugs and i was rationalizing like you know like it wasn't a criminal charge you know it's just a phone um but you know it was the same type of thinking that was getting me put back in prison um and i i noticed that it was a problem um and then you know i lost a lot from that um, and I went to two classes. You had a phone, you said? So, a phone in 2022? Yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah, that's what you asked me about, right? Right. No, I, I did ask you. I'm just trying to figure out. You said you had just gotten off of drugs, and I'm just trying um, to figure that out. I you've was, been in for 19 years. Had you had some was, positive uh, screens while you've been in there? I. It was August 24th. Uh, 2018 when I stopped using the drugs. Um, I was going through, I, I went through a period. Um, you know, my daughter got taken. Um, my mother died on Father's Day in 2017. And I was, you know, I, I had to go through some things. Um, so so the, I, I was the turning the drugs. So the, the disciplinary in 18 was probably, what was that contraband? Drugs in 18? That's 7, 15, 18. Can you give me one second? Is that it? 
Yes, seven, fifteen, eighteen. Oh, that was a cigarette. Okay. That was a cigarette. That okay. Was a cigarette. Eight twenty four eighteen. That was intoxication. Okay, and you it said, and, and it, you just said it in August is when you decided to stop using. So it is the end of August. Yeah, it was August on that last intoxication. That's you know I, I had to really start looking at my life. Um, and what was what was eleven seven nineteen? That was a phone. So you had phones on the last two. Yeah, the phone last two were phones. Okay, you and so you you decided in, in, in at the end of August eighteen that you, you you were done. You had enough because I know you've taken a lot of classes, and so yeah. um, you know, I it, that last one it was like you know I I was sitting in a cell and I just really started thinking about my life, um, all the choices I made. I always I always came to prison for it. Um, you know, I was using drugs and the same thing that I was using trying to, you know, ease that pain was it was just causing more trouble. And, you know, I, I, I had just made a decision in my life. You know, just, you know, I wanted to change. I didn't want to keep doing the same thing over and over. Um, and, you know, when I started out on that, you know, it wasn't easy at first. But, you know, I started getting in school, started working on my sobriety. Um, get my um, certification in generators and uh, electrical systems. And, you know, I, I, I've been doing good for the last five years it's on my sobriety. So what have, what have you been doing for your sobriety? What, what have you you've taken, taken for a change? You've taken, uh, li have you done living well, in balance? Taken for a change, but uh, living in balance. Uh, cage rage. These were done early in my sentence. Um, I continue to do 12 steps AA every, you know, every day. I do that every day. So, so what have you, um, what have you done for since, since, you, since, you, since you had the intoxication, what have you taken? Since I had the, that last intoxication, um, I've gotten 100 hours um, to cuckoo. I'm in victim awareness right now. Um, I continue to do AAA, uh, NA every day. Um, I was a sober group and I did that. So you had all the others before that last one. You haven't had any long-term substance abuse treatment ever? Um, no, sir. So what's your plans if you to be, well, let me ask you this. You, you haven't been checked or, or, or drug tested since. Have you been drug tested since um, eighteen? Since so, I, 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 I can take a drug test any day right now. I can take one. If but you have to feel I'm good. Just, I'm just so, asking. I'm um, asking. No, I haven't. I, okay. I've had. If I was using drugs, I wouldn't be having this conversation with you today. I'd be in the cell. I'm just, I'm just curious. I'm just curious if you have you been tested since then. I'm just curious. So, what's your plans if you were to be released today? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Um, my short term plan is to go to with Mr. Kerry Myers to the uh, Pro Project, and you know, while I'm there, take advantage of the uh, programs and the resources that they have available. You know, get my meetings and a sponsor put in place, and you know, just you know, kind of fortify everything. Um, you know, just get used to you know, being out in society, you know, it's, I've been gone for almost 20 years, you know, I, I don't need to take one big giant leap out, you know, I, I, I need to take baby steps, you know, um, and that was my short term, term plan there. And, you know, while I'm there, you know, um, I have a job lined up and, you know, just have everything put in place for when what I you gonna know, do, what kind of work do decide you to leave. What kind of work you do? You have a lot of, it's like it's, you have a lot of skills. Um, I have a job lined up at TT Barge in Donaldsonville, um, doing some electrical work over there. Um, I think there's a letter in there somewhere. Yeah. Are you going back to the same area that you got in all this trouble? Absolutely not, sir. Um, that I'm not going back to St. Tammany Parish. Um, once I leave, uh, if I'm released, I leave the um, parole project. I'm going to stay with my cousin who lives in Baton Rouge. Um, you know, she uh, she goes to Church of Healing Place, and you know, I want to get involved with that, and you know, just continue living a, a 
simple, clean, sober life, you know, um, and, you know, be around my daughter. So are you, um, are you uh, going to NAA? I mean, a couple times a week, what are you doing? Yes. Yeah, I go, I go a couple times a week, uh, what, once a week back here. Um, back, yeah, back there. Every other, every other week, you know, they have some guests. Um, a lot of it, you know, I, I, I do on my own. I have a mentor back here. His name is Dale Craig, you know, and, you know, even though when we don't have in a class, you know, he's there talking to me and, you know, that having that has helped me a lot, you know, and keeping me, you know, out of trouble and, and the way I've been going. Um, you know, it was a, a few people that, have, you know, come along in my life since I stopped using drugs that, you know, gotten me to the point where I am today. Okay. Warden, you got any input for us? Uh, his his reference to back there, Mr. Kelsey, he's uh, currently at Camp D. He's in one of our out camps. So they have uh, once a week. They do A and A once a week. So okay. that's the that reference. Um, for that, you know, he he's basically, like he said, and like you've seen in his record, um, with his write-ups, Prior to 18, you know, or well, prior to that last uh, intoxication in August of uh, 18, um, he had he just had several writers. Since then, he's had these two: uh, one for smoking cigarette, and obviously tobacco is is contraband here now. And then the cell phone in 22. Um, he's gotten some maintenance work done here for us. Uh, Looks as I mean, he does have those two, and I'm not I'm not downplaying those two contrabands. Um, as far as his sobriety, looks as though he has turned that corner and, okay. and been able to stay clean here for you know going on five years. Okay. Thank you, Warren. All right, we'll hear from Carrie Myers. Uh, good afternoon, Kerry Myers with Louisiana Parole Project. Um, Mr. Tisdale is a is a uh, skilled and talented person. He spent his time uh, obtaining those skills. He is employable, uh, as you as you have seen. He's already got employment. Uh, working with with uh, IPNO, we are uh, prepared to assist uh, Mr. Tisdale in his transition. Uh, parole Project will be providing. Uh, his short-term transitional programming and assistance. Uh, we'll, we, we will get him a substance abuse evaluation and ensure that he follows those recommendations. Uh, not, we, not that we have to ensure, as you can see from the last five years, he wants to follow those recommendations. He knows that his sobriety is everything, uh, particularly if he wants a relationship with his daughter, uh, which is uh, in the conversations with him is the most important thing to him. Uh, he has a long-term plan. Uh, he has a stable long-term plan. He's, as I said, he's gainfully, he has, he has gainful employment skills. So we would just ask this board, uh, Parole Project will provide him with the transitional services. We'll work in conjunction with IPNO uh, to help him through his long, his long-term assistance. We just ask this board to, to grant his parole today. All right, we'll hear from Ms. Janet now. Um, Mr. Kelsey, um... Actually, uh, Ms. Janet is not speaking. It, it's going to actually be uh, Mr. Tizel's cousin, Kimberly, who's here with us. Um, I apologize. I don't see that name on here, but Kimberly, you can make a brief statement. Hi. Um, you can say she. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kimberly Schultz. I'm Ricky's first cousin. I've known Ricky all of my life. Um, Ricky and I had very different childhoods growing up. Um, I apologize. My parents were very strict. They didn't set a lot of boundaries for us. We had rules. I know from growing up that Ricky did not have the structure. And because of that, I think he got in a lot of trouble as a teenager and then as a young adult. He was never a mean or hateful person to me. He was always very kind and compassionate. And I always thought he was really funny and incredibly smart. Who just really needed structure and direction. He had a lot to give the world and know where to put it. Um, through my many conversations with Ricky over the years, I've seen him grow up in prison. 
He's told me about the classes and the programs. Thank you. That he's taken and the struggles he's had dealing with his addiction. He's expressed to me on multiple occasions that he never wants to be a part of that world again. A world of drugs and making those poor decisions. I know Ricky struggled over the last 20 years, um, but in the last five years, I've seen a remarkable change in Ricky. I hear it in his voice when he talks about his sobriety and the programs he's taken that help him get to the bottom of why he made those choices to be involved with drugs and be in that scene. And I also hear it in his voice when he talks about his daughter, Michaela. It's the most important thing to him. I've seen a change that I've not seen before. Truly, I know Ricky is committed to living a clean and sober life, and I'm prepared to help him with that. I live in Baton Rouge. I'll be welcoming him to my home post losing a pro project if he's granted release. My family is going to be there for support, to encourage him to get to his weekly meetings, and to be there for him when things like life take over, grief and frustration. He's going to come over family dinners, birthday parties with my children, or just when he needs to have a safe space. Um, Ricky and I have also talked about going to service at the Healing Place Church in Baton Rouge, where I attend. He's attending their men's support groups, the small groups they have for men to get closer relationship with God. The Ricky that I know, that I see now, has shown me that he is committed. He's committed to living a life substance-free. I just wants to work and be a continuing presence in his daughter's life. I truly, truly believe if he is granted to be released, that he will stay on the path that he has chosen for himself. Thank you. And thank you. What about Dr. Virginia White? Is she around? Is that somebody we could speak to? Yes. Hi, good afternoon. Um, my name is Virginia White. I'm the client service specialist at the Innocence Project New Orleans. And um, I would just like to take a moment to provide um, just a brief overview of Mr. Tisdale's remarkable journey um, and his strong reentry plan. Some yeah. things have all, oh, I'm sorry. No, just, yeah, just, yeah, you definitely could just give us this plan. We definitely have, we have <laughs> gone through the process. Okay. We have everything. It's, it's, it's been thorough, thorough, thorough. So <laughs> you tell me what his plan is. Okay. Yes, sir. So um, it's already been mentioned. He will be plans to go to LPP. So in a sense, if no, we also provide reentry support and we will be coordinating those services with LPP um, just to ensure he has strong support with getting to meetings, um, also getting to his job. And he also has strong family support. Um, and his dedication to rehabilitation is evident in the multiple times that he's completed AA and NA programs, and he's incorporated those lessons into daily life and decision making. So a lot of the triggers are things that he struggled with coping um, within the past. He now has the skill set and tools to respond to those situations in a healthy way. Um, Basically, so over the past two decades, um, Mr. Tisdale has shown remarkable dedication to personal growth and accountability. His journey towards that personal accountability and positive change is commendable, and it also supports a strong reentry plan. And as you can see, all of the support that he has here today. Um, so awesome. I hope that you will consider that, and I will I will wrap it up there. Thank you for thank your time. you, thank you so much, thank you. <laughs> All right, Ricky, would you like to make a statement on your behalf and then we'll let Caitlin uh, wrap it up at the end? Yes, sir. Um, I'd like to uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, you know, before I came to prison, I, I was a person, I was selfish. I, I didn't I didn't follow the rules. Um, I made a lot of bad decisions. Um, I didn't know I, I, I didn't know I was, and I really didn't have control over my core self. Um, you know, I I kept making the same mistakes of, you know, going back to the same environment and around the same people, you know, when I get out of prison. Um, and obviously the things I was doing wasn't working. Um, you know, one of the problems I, I wasn't being put in prison for very long periods of time. Um, so I wasn't trying to change that behavior um, that got me here in the first place. So, you know, it, it took getting this life sentence and, to hit rock bottom to really start to actually want to change. Um, you know, this was the biggest transformation for me. 
because, you know, I learned that before I can go back in society, you know, and function as an individual who can appreciate the freedom and the people around me. I had to dig deep down inside to discover all my character defects and address the root causes in order to be successful. Um, you know, I needed to learn how to respect myself and respect others and stay committed to personal positive growth. Um, you know, now I'm, I'm someone, I value my sobriety um, and my education um, and the people's pin, opinion of me, um, you know, and what my daughter thinks of me. Sorry. Um, you know, I just I want to be a positive role model for her, uh, support her, encourage her, and you know, encourage her not to make some of the same mistakes that I made, um, and be that loving, caring father that she deserves. Uh, it's my hopes today that this boy can see the positive changes that I made within myself and my commitment to my sobriety and give me a chance to prove to you, not only you, but to me, that I can be successful in my reentry in society. Thank you. All right, thank you. Kayla, would you like to wrap it up? Uh, yes, if I may, just briefly. Um, good afternoon. My name is Caitlin Newswanger. I'm a staff attorney with Innocence Project, New Orleans Unjust Punishment Project. Uh, and I just wanted to kind of touch, you brought up Mr. Tisdale's contraband write up the most recent um, from last year. Uh, but I think that this write up in itself is the, the best example of Mr. Tisdale's growth um, because I think it took this for him to learn and grow and gain so much from his, from his education and what he's worked towards to get his certifications. And then to have this write up and realize how much he had lost. But when that happened, Mr. Tisdale did not get high. He did not relapse. Instead, he said, okay, I'm going to change my path. And he enrolled in thinking for a change in the Tapuco class and he and he got it together. And, and I have to say that Mr. Tisdale's growth started way before that. You know, he has had five years of sobriety, which those of us who know people who suffer with addiction. Five years is a really long time. And it's very clear how his path led to, to the five years. The 2018 intoxication write-up, that's when it stopped. He got into Christian ministry. He met a pastor who he reached out to support. This pastor led him to education where he was able to thrive and flourish. And that is how he's been able to maintain his sobriety is through education and developing his skills, which have made him very um, appealable to employers. Uh, Mr. Tisdale spoke of his transformation, but I, I do want to point out that, you know, it's not necessarily a transformation, but more of an evolution. Mr. Tisdale has evolved and he's going to continue evolve to evolve because he's going to continue down this path that he's created for himself and that uh, the parole project and our client services has created for him. Um, he is an incredibly emotionally intelligent person. And he is a father who has been present continuously in his daughter's life. And he is a beloved family member and friend. And these have kept him going through his nearly two decades of incarceration. And for these reasons, we request that this board would grant Mr. Tisdale's parole under any conditions deemed right, thank appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, the panel's prepared to vote. Um, Ricky, uh, man, got a lot. Got a lot going on, Ricky. You got a lot going on, man. I uh, went thoroughly through your file, uh, uh, thanks to counsel for putting all that in, in information in there. Um, and, uh, you know, look, I, I looked through it at length. You, you, your rap sheet's terrible. Um, and, 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 you know, look, I was, I am terribly disappointed in, in the, in the, uh, in your write-ups and your write-ups in the recent write-ups. Um, and so I had all the intentions after looking at everything I looked at of really denying you, to be honest with you, but you had a good interview, right? That's why we do this stuff. Um, you know, you have good interview, you got great support system, you got great family support system. Um, uh, again, I, uh, you know, I'm di I am dis disappointed in the, in the write-ups that, that is a thinking 
you know, cognitive thought process to, to, to have done that. But, but you know, listen, you, you, you're, you're headed in the right direction. You're, you're saying the right things. You're doing the right things. This is my concern. Okay. My concern is, is that uh, you do have a drug and alcohol problem. You know that and you haven't had it in five years and that's great. And it is difficult to stay sober. I know a lot of people uh, with similar problems. Uh, so, so what I've seen is I haven't seen really any substantial long-term substance abuse treatment for you. Um, and, and so for me, in order to feel good about you, I want you to go home. I mean, you you got a great family. They love you. You love them. We want you to go home and stay home. We don't want you to go home and kind of hang and maybe get back. We want to give you the tools to go home. So, so my vote today would be to grant your parole uh, to the Steve Hall Long-Term Substance Abuse Program. That's a, an intense a rehab program from DOC. It's the best we have to offer, and, and it's helped many folks. And you, you're yearning for wanting more. You're wanting more. Well, here's your opportunity. Uh, and you, you, you've done everything else and had more. So, uh, you know, here, here is, is an opportunity that I'm giving you to go to Steve Hall Intensive Substance Abuse Program. Yes, It'll be the long-term treatment program. Is sit on the front row as soon as you complete it, and you'll be released. Uh, you'll be released with um, to the Louisiana Pro Project to get that squared away. You'll have uh, you'll follow up whatever substance abuse recommendations they give you. Uh, want you to attend NAA three times a week, and you'll have a curfew from 10 p to 6 a. Now I'm just one vote, but I just uh, I, I I look. I know you want to go home now. I know your family wants you to go home now. I want you to go home and stay home. You know. So it, I think this is the best from what I've seen, from what I hear, from what I read. This is the best opportunity for you to to be clean and clear for the rest of your life and do the things you want to do. Just one vote, Mr. Freeman. Okay. Uh... You know, I've listened to you too, and and you know, at first when I looked at your supervision record and all of that, I had my doubts also. But your problems are drugs. There's no doubt about it. And as Mr. Kelsey said, you know, we want to make sure you stay home. And so I changed my mind, and I'm also going to vote to grant with the stipulation that you complete to Steve Halls and and get everything you can out of. I mean, this is this is nine months for the rest of your life, okay? Because if you get convicted again, I, when they see you were habitual one time, and you came back, it, it's not it's not going to be good. So take advantage of this, and uh, good luck to you, Mr. Rivera. My vote would be the same for the same reasons. Good luck to you. All right, three votes to grant the uh, Steve Hall Substance Abuse Program long term nine months. You'll have follow up. Uh, sec, uh, substance abuse, re whatever they recommend. You have NAA three times a week, curfew 10P to 6A, and you'll go to the whole project. But you're both great. Good luck to you, man. They got a great family. You need to hug them big. Thank y'all. We'll thank adjourn. You. 133. Thank you, Warden. Thank y'all. <laughs> go to my meeting. <laughs>